Hello everyone, welcome to your YouTube channel where we talk all about the GATE exam and we are studying operating system process management. We have arrived up to the CPU scheduling algorithms. The very first one is first come first serve. The simplest algorithm which is also known as FCFS and the first in first out. So the criteria over which first come first serve algorithm works is arrival time. Whichever process comes first gets scheduled first and the mode of execution of this algorithm is non-preemptive that simply means if a process has been allocated CPU then it either finishes or it goes for the input output but no other process will be given the chance on CPU and taken back from it. Alright, so that is uh, the very simplest understanding of it. For even detailed understanding, I have taken a question right here, uh, a chart of process information which we are going to schedule right away with the help of first come first serve. So we have process number from P1 to P6 and their arrival times are also given. So this is something like you are going to get in your exam, a question like this, the burst time of respective process is also given to us. These are the times which might be asked in your question, the completion time of process, turnaround time and the waiting time and there are some more things which we will calculate after scheduling is finished. So let's start scheduling these process given from P1 to P6 with the help of FCFS that means with the help of arrival time of each process on the CPU. Now you see uh, to do this we actually make use of this tabular chart which is known as Gantt chart where we actually on the x axis we show the time and on each moment of time we show that the CPU is actually hold by which process or the CPU has been assigned or allocated to which process from which time to which time like that okay so let's start scheduling very first now I would look into my arrival times and I would see the minimum time the minimum arrival time is zero that means at time zero some process have arrived which process arrived process one so whoever came first out of all process one came first at the time zero so let's allocate this the CPU so process one and because it is non preemptive so whatever amount of time this process wants to execute that much amount of time is given right away so we give process one the control of CPU from 0 to 3 okay and by the time this process 1 is finished right now next process next process who is coming in the system after P1 I mean after time 0 is time, like we have to see the next minimum arrival time simple so time 0 was the minimum next minimum is 1 so at time 1 who is coming process 2 is coming so let's take process 2 and allocate the CPU how much burst it needs 2 so 3 plus 2 okay so you see this is scale of time goes generalized from 0 to n time okay so you you give 3 bursts to the P1, P1 right after 3 2 bursts are given to P2 so how much what is the right time right now 5 okay so the P2 is also finished now the next process is whoever is coming next so in this question fortunately or to make it simple and easy I have taken one after the another that 0 1 2 3 4 5 so that you can simply schedule in the order so for that matter I we understand that yes P3 will get scheduled P3 needs how many burst one burst 5 plus 1 is 6 so P3 is also done and cutting them off so that you can understand that they have been already scheduled next is process 4 coming at time 3 is given 4 bursts 6 plus 4 how much 10 okay all right I hope this is understood now the next process coming at the time 4 is a p5 so p5 has been assigned how much it needs it needs 5 bursts 10 plus 5 makes how much it makes 15 so I'm writing here 15 okay or, or else we can write here also 15 correct now this is also done next and the last process to execute is process number six which is coming last okay whoever is coming last is getting the last chance needs eight burst so 15 plus 8 is how much 23 23 burst so this is your Gantt chart which is showing that time 0 to 3 p1 is allocated from 5 to 6 p3 is allocated you see the whom the cpu is allocated to that is shown on this chart with the respect of time. 
Now once we have finished the scheduling based on the arrival time of each process, the scheduling is finished. So now is the time for you to start getting the values for these various times, completion time. So what is the completion time? That means the time each process has completed. So P1 has completed by the time 3. So its completion time is 3. P2 completed 5 at 5. P3 completed at 6. Okay, you see the first time when the process is scheduled is 5 and the last time is its completion time. So it's completed at the time 6. Now P4 completed by the time 10. So this was for this actually. This is completed at 10. Now P5 completed at 15. So 15 and P6 completed at 23. So this becomes the completion time of each process. Now when we know the completion time, we can easily find out the turnaround time and the waiting time. So as if you remember in the previous video, I explained what turnaround time is. The total time a process is, is spending in the system. Either it is waiting or it is executing. Which simply comes out to be when it gets completed minus when it arrived. Alright. So we have completion time for each process. We have arrival time for each process. So with the help of turnaround time equals to completion time minus arrival time we can find out the value of turnaround so let's do that 3 minus 3 makes 3 5 minus 1 4 6 minus 2 4 10 minus 3 7 15 minus 4 11 23 minus 5 18 right so this becomes the turnaround time now the next factor we need to find out is the waiting time for each process so we understand the waiting time is nothing but then the amount of time a process has to wait either in the ready queue or in the interrupted block. Correct? Now also if I have to say I can say turnaround time is nothing but then the burst time plus the plus the waiting time. Correct? The total time spent in the system. So if I simply make the wait time as turnaround minus burst time that is also absolutely correct. So with that wait time is nothing but then this minus this okay so let's take that 3 minus 3 is nothing but then 0 you see process 1 doesn't have to wait it came immediately it was scheduled so it waited for 0 second for process 2 the turnaround time is 4 and the burst time is 2 so 4 minus 2 becomes 2 if you want to understand from the GAN chart you can understand it was scheduled at the time 3 and it arrived in the system at time 1 so from 1 to 3, what it was doing? It was waiting. So how much it waited? It waited for 2 burst. Correct? Next, 4 minus 1 becomes 3. 7 minus 4 is 3 again. 11 minus 5 is nothing but then 6. 18 minus 8 is nothing but then 10. Correct? So this becomes the turnaround time and the waiting time. Now the question will usually ask, average turnaround time. So you need to find out the average turnaround time and it also asks average waiting time. So for finding out the average turnaround time you simply have to sum this up and how much it comes out to be 3 plus 4 7, 7 plus uh, 4 11, 11 7 18, 18 plus 18 36 plus 11 47. So 47 divided by the total number of process that is 6 divided by 6. So this gives you the value of average turnaround time that you can calculate. The average waiting time again sum of the total waiting time of all the process. So that is uh, 2 plus 3 5, 5 plus 3 8, 8 plus 6 uh, 14, 14 plus 10 24. So 24 divided by 6. So this will give you average waiting time with these values you can find out by dividing them. Well, Alright, so uh, this is how actually we are supposed to schedule. Now somebody might think ma'am if all the processes are arriving at the same time that is also possible correct then which process to be scheduled first if all processes arrive at the time at the same time or more than one process arrive at the same time then usually it is given the question how do we have to crack this probably we have to go by the lower process id if p1 and p2 are arriving at time 0 then we go by default by p1 and then p2 okay if such question is there, if in exam such question is given, it is clearly uh, told in the question how you have to proceed. Okay, but if it is not, then usually we do by lower process ID to the higher process ID. That's what. Now, everyone, you might be thinking you are putting the process one by one. That simply means you see, I 
schedule the process P1, then I take it back and schedule the process P2. So what I am doing actually at this moment of time is I am switching the process. So a context switch is involved. So we simply ignore the context switch overhead unless question mentioned to be included to make it simple. All right. Now the another things I wanted to discuss is schedule length. As I discussed in the previous video, what is the schedule length here? You have a schedule, correct? Schedule says P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 comes in this order and gets executed. This is the length of the schedule. What is the length of the schedule? 23. The amount of time for the arrival of first process and the completion of last process that gives you schedule length. So if I say 23 minus 0, it becomes nothing but then 23. The next important thing I want you to find out is mu. That is the throughput efficiency of the system. What is the throughput of this algorithm or this moment of time when the algorithm is implemented? So the total number of process we executed are 6 divided by in how much time we executed this process? In 23 burst time. Correct? So this becomes your throughput of the system that these many processes have been executed in this much time. So how many processes have been executed in per unit time? So I hope this is clear. Uh, I'll see you once again in the next video where we are going to solve more questions about first come first serve. And I'll explain you one very important factor that is Conway effect which is related to first come first serve.